What's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome back. Today we're working on my to-do file system. Uh, so the idea is I have things that I want to accomplish. Basically what we've written in the top right here, right? Like we have items that are approximately this. We have like a project that we're working on as well as like chunks of work that are approximately one stream long, right? And as we kind of work, as like I work towards a stream on a topic, I might want to like stub out uh, what's important, like what like the list of tasks are for that stream. And sometimes when I'm doing this, I like find like, oh, this doesn't really fit here. It makes more sense to do this in, in this other chunk of work after. Cool. So far, nothing crazy. Um, the way I represent this right now is just like a bunch of files on my disk. And basically like before each stream, I have like a new file with the date and I say like, this is what's going to happen this day. And I can plan like a couple days ahead, but it's kind of hard to like prep out what I'm going to do for like a week or like for a project. And sometimes I like start like finding myself forgetting what I want to get done in a project, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, I want some sort of way to like track these tasks a little bit better. Um, the like obvious first thought there for me is like, Oh, Trello, people use Trello for stuff like this, right? You have like grids of like cards and cards have like stuff to do in them, but I don't really like uh, I don't really want, like, one, I don't want my data to be on the internet. Two, I want, like, uh, I, I don't want to have to, like, open up a web browser and go to a website to do all this. It, like, feels like the actual editing part of the task feels good the way it is. And it, like, feels like a bunch of extra complexity that I don't need. So, out the window there. Um, then I think about, like, well, what's, like, the dumb, dumb caveman way that I would fix this problem? And it's, like, well, I would just for each task, I would, like, put some sim links between them, right? For this task, I link to this one, this one, I link back to this one. Um, but then, like, managing those sim links starts to become a little difficult because they're, like, two-way relationships. And so if I delete the sim link from one folder, um, I want to be able to, like, navigate back and forth between them. So I want, like, some sort of, like, two-way state handling. But, like, the idea of just, like, folders that are sim linked together feels pretty close to what I want. Um, and so kind of, I kind of arrived at the idea of, well, what if we just manage those sim links in an application for us? And so like implementing like a shitty little file system to basically manage sim links between items in a database for us, um, seems like it should be pretty quick and straightforward to implement. And so we're a couple streams in and we're kind of finding that like, well, it's not quite as simple as I thought it was going to be, uh, as is, <laughs> as is often the case with software in general. Uh, but it, I still want to like explore the idea and continue on. So where we're at right now is I have a database um, where basically I have like items in folders. Each item has like an ID. So here we have like item one, two, and three are the only things in the DB right now. And if we look at the metadata that, along with this database, um, we can see that, like, oh, each file has, like, a name, so item 1 is called hello, item 2 is called world, item 3 is a smiley face, um, and each of these guys have relationships, right, so there are a relationships that's, like, one relationship we have is, I like, relationship 1, and it says that it relates parents to children, or children to parents, depending on which way you're looking. Um, and then we can store for each item, we can say, well, which relationships are you part of, essentially? And so we have this little database tool that can like show those things to us. So I can like list the items. And I see I have item one and he is a, has a relationship of parent child, uh, where he is the parent and he, the sibling is item two. Um, and that isn't represented in like the source file system anyway, but once we mount it, uh, with our little custom script, like custom file system, we can look at the test mount folder and now we can see that like item one has children world and item two has parent hello, um, which is okay. We're pretty close here. Uh, these guys are end up being like empty folders, but what they really should end up being is uh, sim links to the other items. So the first thing that I want to do today is like quickly fix that. I think that it shouldn't take too long uh, to fix that. And then uh, when we get the end of that what we kind of want to do next is um say we have a relationship of like this item blocks this item and kind of like a tree of work that is like real that we're gonna end up having is like i'm gonna use this to represent my like image to text neural network project and you know one of the things that i might want to work on is i might want to work on like porting the project into like run it from like rust or c 
then I might want to look at like Wasm, um, so I can run in the browser. I might want to look at like SIMD to like speed things up. From there, I might want to look at like Wasm and SIMD, and I might want to build like a website, website. But like all of these things, the only real thing that I can work on next is this. So we need to build like some way to filter out the next available items, which should be as simple as saying, um, show me items where they have they are they have no parent relationship. Right? Basically, <coughs> this link doesn't exist. Uh or sorry, this link doesn't exist. You can have children, he can have arrows pointing down, but he can't have an arrow pointing up. So this we will kind of delete and we'll say anybody that has no blocked by, we want to show that. Um, and I'm being careful here because I think that I, I think that this is all doable without the project, uh, code, knowing that there is such a thing as a blocks blocked by relationship. I'm kind of hoping in my head that when I get to the end of this, I can use this as like just general document storage. Cause like anything that has really, like this is just folders and relationships. And I want to be able to, as a user, put in any custom filter that I find relevant. Um, cause like something that's bothered me about other task tracking systems I've used in the past is like the data is there and I can't get what I want out of it. So the more that we force ourselves to build things in like the general way, uh, the more flexibility I'll have later as well, which is pretty sick. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what we're working on today. And that's what we're working on today. So let's start by just getting going with, uh, adding those sim links. Um... Let's see, let's see, let's see. So, uh, there's been a little bit of refactoring done to get things, like, in a committable state since last stream. We've now kind of split this up as uh, there's this library that we're using, libfuse, and he's written in C. He is now connected to this, like, C adapter thing uh, in Rust. And he, on, he basically does all of the, like, system and fuse interaction. That's his role now. And then we have, like, our, like, client. Client. And he handles, like, informing this guy of what the custom attributes of the file system are, if that makes sense. So, like, any, any like, work that we're doing related to our file system kind of ends up in here. Client talks to the database. Uh, these are split because, in theory, like, in the future, we might want to do, like, an HTTP server on this guy and, like, set up a website or whatever. Like, the data is, like, its own thing, and we're working kind of, like, on one view of the data, but there could be future views of the data that aren't this, so keeping them separate makes sense. Um, and so, anything that we do that's, like, how does the file system look gets done in this area, and then we just, like, forward out for, like, actually interacting with the system to this extra thing. Um, so, if we are looking at symlinks... What, the first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to say that the paths that are related to our relationships are symlinks. So if I, like, mount this again and we look at children, this is flagged as a folder right now. This needs to get flagged as a symlink. So that's step one. Which means when we iterate our directories, we... Mm, let's think, let's think, let's think. We the, we parse paths. That's probably where this is going to go. So we, we get a path from our program, right? Somebody says ls in a directory. And which directory they're lsing is going to be passed in here. And based off the path, we do some, like, heuristic matching to check where that should go, right? So if we have, like, uh, if we're in items, items one content, we know that that's the content for the item with id1. And if we're in items items one children something this should at the, this point in time this means that there's like a relationship where we have children and every item in this folder should be one of those children um and so i think that we have that case here we have this things like matches item relationship folder and if we match an item relationship folder we flag that the folder purpose here is to present our item relationships. So really all we should do here is wherever we f determine that that item relationship maps to a directory, um, we should just say that that should be a symlink. And it looks like, 
So one of the things we do with that is we list contents in that thing uh, where we flag items as directories. And also when we get the attributes of a path, we ask if the thing is a directory. And if it's a directory, we say, okay, a directory. Otherwise we say it's a file. So I think, let's just double check that that's correct here. If we take this is dir function that we call, uh, we can just kind of throw a, take this guy out of there and say, in this case, he is a, if we say false here, I think what should happen when we mount this now is that we should show children as files, not as directories, I think. Uh, so we can go to, uh, sorry, cd ls test mount items zero should have children no zero isn't a valid id sorry they start at one so here uh we have items one children oh oops we've changed the the actual container of children to a folder not the items inside it so we were incorrect here item relationships should still be flagged as a directory because it's a directory of relationships okay um which means that we actually are going to uh, have something. Uh, item relationships, item relationship, relationship side. So this should be a singular relationship, I think. Who does this guy come from? Matches item relationship folder. And he checks if he is a child of parent of items. Then we check if, oh god, item, third, fourth. So this is something like items, id, relationship, name, sibling. Should be this path. Okay, which means that somewhere we should be checking... If we're in a subfolder, we're not in the exact folder we want. Oh, so maybe this is a mistake. Matches item relationship folder. It could be that I fucked up here. Um, Because here we're trying to say, like, this folder is an item relationship. And we're saying if this thing is set, then it's not. Hmm. Let me double check that that's, like, the purpose of this. So here... We have items, item relationships. I guess we don't really have a distinction for like, oh, okay, yeah, that's right, that's right, sorry. So this item relationship is I am item one, I have a relationship parent child and I am the parent side. And so in that means that this matches function is correct. And so now we also actually actually have to create a new path that represents the sibling as well. Um, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So here we want a item relation relationship relation ship sibling i guess and he is i guess he doesn't actually care that he's a sibling probably he probably just cares that he is a sim link so we can call this like item link to a specific item that seems reasonable to me so the item relationships folder will return a bunch of item links. That seems reasonable. Uh, we probably need like a link type here as well. And I think that'll probably line up, maybe. Uh, so here we currently have this like is directory function and this should now be uh, what like entry type. Um. I guess maybe we'll just call this like get entry 
for this path. And he will return our like dir entry thing, which is dir file or link with their associated name. And then what? We basically hmm, we say let maybe we just pass the path in for any of these. What is where do we use this dir entry otherwise? Hum 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 hum. I take it back. I don't want to do it this way. I don't want to do it this way. I just want to call this a uh, file type, I guess. We'll just make a new thing. I'm okay with that. That happens to be like duplicated with this, which is fine, but we just won't specify the names. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. So that means this guy's going to return now a file type. And then all we have to do is all of these guys return file type dir. Everything in the world right now is a directory. Because we don't have any files at all yet um, in our custom view. We do have like paths that get passed through um, to like the original files and the original folders. But those aren't handled by this section of the code, so it's okay. Um... And now we can just throw on this extra piece here that is if we have a path purpose is an item link, we are now a link. Easy. Okay. All right. Hey man, what's your experience? Uh, yeah, I've been I've been like in industry for like ten years ish probably. Worked at like a. Uh, firmware company for security cameras, which was pretty fun. Uh, I don't really like security cameras that much, but, like, all of the work that goes into them is, like, pretty interesting. Uh, you get to work on, like, you know, system on a chip stuff, like, board. You get, like, a somebody, like, hands you, like, a circuit board, and then they go, like, please make it run code now, which is pretty fun. Um, then I worked at, like, another place where we did, like, neural network stuff for, uh, robotics like automated manufacturing stuff both both pretty fun uh yeah school for computer engineering so i got a little bit of experience under my belt but you know normal amount normal amount uh here we're gonna call this get file type for the path and then you currently employed uh i'm taking a year off uh just to like you know for fun <laughs> and the thought is, if I do this for fun, uh, there's, like, two options, right? One is that, like, the stream does better than I expect, and maybe one day, like, it's, like, enough to sustain me, and I get to the end of my time off, and I say, I'll just keep going. Or, it's just really fucking good interview prep, right? Just talking about programming all the time to you guys and having you understand what I'm thinking is just, holy shit, I'm gonna be, like, miles ahead on my next interview, it's gonna be sick. Uh, yeah, so, that's what we're working on right now. Um, okay, so, somewhere, somebody was calling isdir, probably on the, like, uh, where was I looking? You deserve better coffee? Hey, da dude, McDonald's is, it tastes like milk, and that's all I really need. <laughs> I shouldn't drink Logo Out. Like a fucking shill. I should, like, mask it off before I drink. Hide it in another cup or something. Um, okay. Somewhere. Somewhere. Fuse mod, probably. I was calling is dir to decide if I should set the attributes of this thing to be a file or a directory. And I guess now, instead of calling is dir, I say get file type. Great. And I say, if this is a file type dir... Well, import this and we say file type dir we do that uh if it is a file type link or this is file type file we do what we're doing here otherwise we have a new case here we have a file type link and i believe the name for a link was like s i f link we can actually check if we do like man to stat and uh somewhere in here we can look at if reg here, okay, here. 
So here in their example, they say uh, ifreg is a regular file, sock is socket, link is a symlink. Hey, Steve-O, thanks for the sub. Appreciate it. We need some nice emotes. Yeah, dude, okay, so I don't really know. I'm not a chatter. I, uh, I'm a Twitch, what is it, what do they call them? Lurkers, usually? I don't really type in people's chats. So I don't really know, like, what people expect to get out of subs. I know emotes are part of it. Is there, like, anything else that I'm supposed to be doing as, like, a streamer to get you guys to, like, not feel ripped off if you press that button? <laughs> uh, okay. So what we're doing, we were in mod, and we were, where, why can't I, foreground, foreground? What the fuck is going on? Why can't I get back into my vim? Oh, because it's over here. That's why. That's why. Uh, so we were looking at... Somewhere, we were supposed to set IF link in our client mod. Please write our names on your body. Do you want me to, like, take my shirt off and, like, do it right on my chest? IF link. Is that Emacs? No, it's Vim. Oh, I think somebody else asked earlier where my NeoVim config is. Um, and I forgot to say it just doesn't exist. Sorry, man. Uh, it's not not on the internet. Why is IF link not there? Hello? I F L N K. Of course they don't put the I in link. Why would they? You can't spell out whole words. We need to be limited to one, two, three, four, five characters. Um and I think six four four is probably reasonable for a link. I actually don't know. If I like ln s test to shell.next, and then I oopsies, other way. Shell dot next to test and i look at the permissions on this it looks like they're just like fucking maxed out max the fuck out so i guess i want 777 for links because i guess the idea is that fuck it you can view the link if you want you still won't be able to view the file contents if the contents of the actual thing that you're linking to aren't set No, no, emotes is it for me. Even when there's more of a link to the stream, like thinking about something or writing something, of course, wants to stream. Got it. Push your NeoVim config, bro. Uh, so it lives like in my dot files for like my whole system. And I don't really like, <laughs> I don't really trust that there's nothing sketchy in there that I don't want to like uh, leak to the world. But, like, my new Vim config, there's nothing crazy in there. It's, like, mostly default. Like, the plugin list is kind of interesting, I guess. But, like, what, most of what you see here is just, like, telescope and language servers. Which is, like, really easy to find. Find stuff on. Nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy. And I guess tree sitter. But I don't know if, like, tree sitter is, like, necessary. It's just, like, prettier syntax highlighting. Meh. You know? Uh, okay. So... Uh, you just want to see how I set up REST support? Oh, all that is, is, uh, we can actually show, show that. It's worth it. Config, and vim, init, lua. All that is, is here, I call into, like, LSP config, Rust analyzer setup. That's it. LSP config is just, like, a, like, like, a repository of language server configs. Um, and just, like, for each one that I have, like, an executable for, we just bang it out. Easy peasy. Um, okay, what was I doing? I was looking at adding item links to read their output. So one is that the path, the pass, path parsing has to now say that I have, uh, we have to return a path purpose of item link if we match an item link folder. So I guess that'll just come down here. We'll say, else if uh, some item ID is equal to matches item link. And we look at the path and the DB. Um, and I don't really know how we're going to do this yet. But in that case, we're going to return an item link with the item ID that we're linking to. Okay, we need to create this matches item link thing. So I guess for now, we'll say function matches item link. And he's going to take in self and path. No, no self here. Just a path. And the database that we're working from. And he's going to return a bool representing if he's true or not. And I guess if we just take the path parent and we say that 
uh, matches item relationship folder of the parent. I think that we then know that we should be an item link. I think. Uh, this should actually be result bool, I guess, because this can fail. So he returns, he can fail with a query error of the DB. Easy. And why is he still not happy? Target check. File systems seem complex. How did you learn to do this? I mean, I knew that, like, I knew that Fuse existed. And I knew that, like, I can interact with the file system. And I just made a guess that it wouldn't be that hard. And I think, so far, it hasn't seemed that hard. Like, it's there's a bunch of, like, small concepts that you have to build up from. Like, oh, I need to list a directory. But, like, it, it's nothing too crazy, right? Like, just, it's just, uh, I think interacting with the operating system is kind of the same as interacting with any single, like, library you've ever used, right? There's, like, unknown behavior and a list of functions that you're allowed to work with, and you just have to figure out, like, what the fuck are those functions supposed to do? And so, I don't think that, like, I've never, like, done this before this. <laughs> it's just we're kind of learning as we go. Learning as we go. Um... This doesn't return a result, that's why. This is supposed to return an option of item ID. Um, and so here, what do we get? We get back a relationship that we match here. So we can say, uh, if this is none, we return none. Because our parent, our parent must match. If our parent is a relationship folder, then that's the only place where, like, this same link can show up right now. Later, we're going to have to, like, amend this to check other things. Uh, but for now, we know that this is all we can return. And this can fail, so we throw a little question mark on him. And otherwise, for now, I think if we just type none here, it should compile. And that will give us a little bit of a somewhere to start from. Path.parent doesn't exist for some reason. What the fuck? He returns an option path. Oh, I see. So uh, we can say let parent is equal to uh, parent is you're going to say the parent should be something. Some parent is equal to path.parent. Otherwise uh, we return okay, none. Because the path, if we have no parent that means that we shouldn't match. Easy. Easy. Is the game on the right side running in real time? Did you make it? When was that? Uh, yeah, there's a stream. If you go to, like, there's a link YouTube. And one of the playlists on there should be writing this thing. Um, but I will warn that I think that was, like, the first set of streams I did. So I actually don't really remember if uh, they're any good. But it's up there. Uh, I think the code, I never pushed it. Uh, but it's not. It's nothing too crazy. It's just, like, Godot. Godot procedural maze generation with, like... Mesh libraries and grids, and then camera movement. So, if you've done like any game dev, should be pretty nothing, nothing crazy. You could probably bang it out in a couple days. Um, okay. So here we have our parent. Now we can just say parent like this, and this should compile. Cargo check. Cargo check. He doesn't compile. Uh, why? 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 Uh, 339, not found of this. Ah. Uh, so here, we said if we match item link, um, but I guess there's a case where this could fail. And so this, like, shit show of a, like, if statement is gonna start looking even uglier. So I have to say that, uh, we have an error here, and we have parse path error. And I guess we can call it check item link match we say fail to check if item fail to check if item link match that doesn't really sound like english when i read it out loud but uh fuck it it's close enough check item link match there we go and then we throw a question mark on there and then uh what are we missing here? Matches item link. Why is this bitching? Result option item ID. Okay. 
So this should, then I throw a question mark on here, so should we get an option item ID? Fuck off, man. What am I missing? Item ID. Oh, because I forgot to put let. If let sum. Of course. Of course. I just have to write the right syntax. Okay. We're close. Um, we have to cover the case where path purpose item link is provided as an int uh, to the list directory function. Um, I guess this should just fail. This just should never happen. Um, does this return error? Read dir error. Okay. And I guess we should make sure that we have one that's like not a directory. Not a directory. And error. Read dir called on non directory. Okay. Easy. Uh, I want a capital D here. And then down here, we can just say that if somebody calls read dir on item link, we just say, uh, return error. What is this? Read dir error, not a directory. Okay, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Easy. Does this compile now? We're close. Uh, we have in our line 73. Nope. Line 134 here. They're saying that I'm missing a case. Aha! So here, if I'm listing things and I find a link, I just put the name there. And I guess here, we're supposed to fill our, like, stat buffer of these things. Like, we're supposed to say that, uh, get attributes of the thing we return. And we're not filling them in right now, which is, like, a little bit of a mistake. I guess we can just fix that now. Or we can write fix me and not fix it now. <laughs> Perfect. Because <laughs> I think that what happens is when we call ls, it actually kind of ignores the stat buffer returned from the read directory call. And it actually like calls get attributes on each thing. And if it, those conflict, it just uses the ones for get attributes. So that should be fine. And I think the last, last piece here is we just have to replace... Uh, this folder, when we iterate item, the item relationship folder, like, i.e., like, the children folder. Um, right now he's, like, finding all of the siblings, and he's, like, returning them as directories. I think we just write link here. And there's a good chance that this just works now. I give it, like, maybe, uh... Maybe like a 60% chance of running collect correctly. Let's see it. So we can go to CD test mount. CD, oh uh, no, sorry. We just want to like LS test mount items one children. Fuck. <laughs> okay. So this is still not working correctly. So he's saying that that's an unhandled path actually. Unhandled path thing. So that's kind of interesting. Where does that log come from? Unhandled path. Looks like here. Uh, so he's probably just not matching as a link here. Um, oh, because this, probably. We never actually checked uh, we never, we never figured out how to, like, link the ID back. Uh, so let's just quickly say, uh, log error. Hello, we have to fill this in, dummy. And maybe we put in the path here. And we should see now, if I do that same ls, we have to fill this in, dummy, for items one children world. Perfect, 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 perfect. Okay, so now all we have to do is, like, resolve this guy back. Um, and what does that mean? So we know that we have... This is... Items, ID, relationship, item, name, is what we're kind of showing here. Which is kind of fucked, because there's no, like, reliable way for us to go back from item name to ticket ID. Because, like, you could have two items that have the same name but are, like, distinct in some way. 
right? If you just happen to create one like in the context of some project. So for now, I think that we will just live with that. Probably the correct thing to do is to like do some sort of name resolution. If you have conflicts, you just like put a two in front of one of them or something. Um, and then we would have to like correctly figure out which one it is. Um, but for now, we'll just uh, not handle that case gracefully. <laughs> and that's probably fine. Uh, we need some way to basically find a ticket by name. And maybe we can like reduce the chance of the collision uh, by also checking the relationship. So here we know that we, we know a few things. We know uh, our ID, we know the relationship name, which like technically could also have the same problem as with item name, and we know the sibling name. So I guess we can do a database query of ju that just matches all of these things. Um, so we can say what? Pub function, uh, item ID from sibling relationship name or something. <laughs> sure. Uh, and what are our things? We have uh, sibling is an item ID. Uh, relationship name is a string. And uh, item name is also a string. Okay, which is going to return a result of an item ID or maybe like a query error to start. And if there, if it ends up being something that could be more complex than that, then we'll return something else. Okay, so what does this look like? I guess we have a statement that we're going to have to prepare. So say let mute statement is equal to self connection pair and it's like what select id from the files table where um and we have what like name is equal to the first thing that's like the first part that covers this constraint um <coughs> 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 but what about this stuff? So here we need to look at relationships that involve our ID. I wonder if there's, can you like do this in like one statement? We, we want like, because the problem is that uh, for relationships, there's not like a one-to-one -one mapping of ID to relationship, it's like met one to many. So I think there's actually like a join that you can do in SQLite that will basically duplicate the left side for every item on the right side that matches. I think inner join, maybe? SQL inner join records records that have matching values in both tables. Uh inner join categories on this equals that um does that maybe it's the another one let's see uh maybe sql one to many join uh do, 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 do. what do they do inner join yeah but that doesn't seem like it's what i want Typo in sibling, by the way, in function name. Thanks. We'll fix that. Uh, maybe that's right. I guess we'll just have to test it. We'll just have to test it because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Um. So let's look at our metadata. And I guess right now we only have uh, one relationship per item. So I guess let's just add an item relationship for ID one for like something else to work with. So I think we have like DB tool 
add item relationship between a one and three. Fuck. Doesn't compile right now. Just comment this out. Silbing. Sibling. Nice. Okay, so now when we open this in SQLite browser, we should see item relationships. We now have two mappings for item one. And so now we can just figure out what our thing should be. So from or select star from files inner join re item relationships on uh, files ID equals item relationships from ID. Oh, geez. Do, but I can also match the two IDs. So I just put like an or here. Or files ID is equal to item relationships to ID. Does that give me something sane? Uh, oh, okay, okay, wait, wait. That, that, that might be right. Where files id equals one okay yeah sick okay so we do have the like duplication of the file id for each relationship so that's perfect that's perfect that's exactly what we want and uh let's just throw out a files id equals two here just to double check hello backspace why can't i backspace this Why, when I press play here, that was weird. I don't know why it was stuck. Okay, yeah, and so it does match with both from and to. Okay, so that looks right. And I guess we actually also have the relationship name we want to want we want to match there. So do we then also do a left join? Um, on relationships or item relationships item relationships id is equal to relationships id uh which left join relationships i think that that does what i want no fuck no such column item relationships id ah so this should be a relationship id and that should be a one-to-one -one relationship so i think we're chilling Sick. Okay, so that gives us all of the things that we want per row that we have to match from. Sick. Sick, 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 sick. And all in one query, which is Augies. Oh, God, I should never say that. God damn it. Um, okay. So we've got kind of like a template for something that should work. And now we just have to punch in the pieces that we need. So we have, oh, I guess we wanted to add some more filters there uh, because we also wanna do the filtering here so we can just assume that every piece is what we want. Uh, so let's comment this out comment this out and go back into SQLite browser. Uh, SQLite browser. And I think all we need to do here is we want to do where files ID is equal to one and item relationships uh, I guess we don't care about the, do we actually care about the item relationships? Maybe not. What are the things that we're trying to match again we have relationship name and item name okay so we have so and files dot name is equal to uh oh we actually want to join on ourselves again is that true so we have we have our file id and then we have like other file name so we want like us fi us file 
relationship them file is like the things that we not we want so that we can match on us file dot uh id relationship name them file dot name uh yes 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 and we shouldn't call it assuming we should say that um we're id we have our id and we have sibling name that's more clear to me which means that we actually have to join on ourselves as well oh jesus christ uh okay so we're close we're close so then we This gets kind of wonky, though, because we don't know if we're us or them here. We don't know if we're, like, the from or to side of the file. Uh, but I guess that's... Ugh. Ugh. Maybe I'll just do this in multiple queries. Trying to cr crank this all into one SQLite -like query is, like, probably technically faster, but it's getting really nasty. Getting really nasty. So instead, let's just do this in many. Um, we'll just do it in many. Fuck it. Uh, okay. So in what's like the many call way to do this? We say find all of our relationships. Filter based off relationship name. Filter based off sibling name. Have you considered using Drizzle ORM? Never heard of it. Drizzle ORM. Lightweight. What, like, what is it? ORM stands for something, clearly. Relation, object, relational mapping. So it's like some sort of wrapper around databases that, like, Make it easier to work with, I guess? Yeah, I see. I see, I see, I see. Um, for now, I mean, I feel like I should be able to, like, flex my SQLite bones enough to get this right. And it makes it, in fact, harder to work with. That doesn't surprise me. I feel like the abstraction layers, I would imagine, are usually really nice because they let you, like, switch out the database backend without having to, like, re-code anything. Um, but I'm pretty tied to SQLite, so I'm not really worried about it. Um, okay. So, first we need to find all of our relationships. So, uh, that's just select relationship ID. Um, I guess we want all of our relationship siblings. That seems reasonable to me. So we can just do that in two calls. One where we select uh hum 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 hum. I guess we're kind of missing a key part here in that we know which side of the relationship we're on. Uh side is a relationship side. That actually simplifies that like massive query a lot because now we know if we're on from or to so we have okay okay wait wait this actually might work now it might work so select star from files inner join relationships item relationships that makes sense now and now which what which of these paths we take uh depends on which side we are so we can do something like match side and if we're relationship if we relationship side if we are the destination then we know that we have uh files id equals rel item relationships uh to id yes yes Okay. And 
then we know that we're matching uh, the files on files.id is equal to item relationships from id. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we have our sibling. And then there's like a left join as, I think. Join as. Uh, SQLite. Can you like SQLite rename table for query? For query. I just want to like address it as something else. Or SQLite self join maybe. So I just want to know like there's a way to aha join employees with the alias after so left join files on them files on us files id or them files id equals the from id yeah, yeah yeah okay cool and then we just invert this for if we're on the source side so us is now from and them is two. Yeah, okay. I think this makes sense. Um, so inner join this inner join uh, item relationships on this. And this is inner join item relationships on that. Okay. So this is now the join string. And then, then we're getting there. We're almost there. We're almost there. We have this shit is still all the same. Uh, select, I guess it's not everything. We have, uh, what do we want to extract from this? We just want them files ID. Yeah. Okay. So format this plus the join stir. And then we can just shove in our where, and we throw in our, the things we care about. So, uh, us files.ids was to the first thing. Them files.name is equal to sibling name. And relationship, relationships dot, oh, uh, fuck. Uh, we need to know if, we need to match depending on which side of the relationship we're on. So we'll say let relationship where is equal to match side. And if we are the destination, we want to match the relationship source. So relationship dot from ID is equal. Fuck, there's another join in here. Oh my lord. Oh no, 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 it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I think. Item relationships, relationship ID. Yeah, 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 yeah. So relationship dot from. I think that's the name of the thing in the table. Relationships from name, it's called. Um. Okay, from name, or if we're the source, we are matching the to name. Source, missing S, yeah, thank you. Jesus, <laughs> uh, so where this and this and relationship where, oh my lord. Okay. Surely that's not right. 
Um, but we can print this for now and run that manually and just see what comes out. Uh, so I guess we'll just replace the format with the print line here. And just see if that's reasonable. So we can go to our DB tool. And uh, for now, we'll just fuck everything. And... Yeah, fuck everything. We're not doing any of this. And all we're doing is getting the DB from... Test DB. And then we're just going to call DB find... Nope. What do we call this disgusting function? Item ID from sibling. Item ID from sibling relationship name. <laughs> Alright. And this guy is unimplemented down here. Alright, so... We have item ID... One. What else do we have? Relationship side. Uh, we are the source. We are the parent. The relationship ID is one. Okay. And the thing that we're matching with is world. Because we're hello. We have hello world. Hello is the parent. World is the child. And I guess, uh, are we also matching the relationship name? We are. Not the relationship ID. So this should be, which side of the relationship are we on? We are matching children. Because we know that we have children. Okay. Jesus Christ. Let's just run the DB tool and see what happens. Select them for okay. Let's just run this in SQLite browser and see what it bitches about. Um, SQLite browser. Execute SQL, and we just replace this with uh, we didn't actually pass the parameters in. So us files ID is one, them files name is world, and relationships from name is children. This is wrong, by the way. We should have to name in here, not from name. So that's that's inverted. Uh, <laughs> fuck. Uh, there we go. From name here, to name there. And we run it again. All right. SQLite browser. And we should probably just leave this open. So we'll run it, we'll redirect everything to dev null to dev null so it doesn't fuck up my terminal and then run it in the background. All right. Open recent. This guy. I can get SQL. We paste this here. And so it should be us files ID is um, one, them files name, world, and relationships to name is children and if i press play here he doesn't like that there was a bracket somewhere here there's an extra bracket there shouldn't be no such column us files id from files us files no such re column relationships to names so do we not join relationships ever we did not Left, join relationships on item, relationships, I, uh, relationship ID equals relationships ID. Hit play. Okay, well, we got something out of that. So that's close. So we made three changes there. I already forgot them, but we'll find them. So one was a bracket that shouldn't be there. This guy, he shouldn't be there. Another one was that we forgot to rename files to us files. And the last piece was we forgot to join relationships. Um, join, left join relationships on 
Uh, item, relationships, relationship ID is equal to relationships ID. What a fucking shit show, man. What a disaster. I bet you this is an indication that I'm doing something horribly fucking stupid. Um, but, you know, we live. So us, one, them, world, two name, children. And we got ID2, which is the world. So that's good. That's working so far. And so now let's just run the inverse of this. So we are item 2 now. We are the destination. We are looking for parents. And we're looking for hello. And let's just run the same shit. And here we have us files ID2. Then files name. Hello. And from name. Relationships from name is parents boom baby okay so i thought that this was going to be quick but this actually turned out to be a massive pain in the ass but i think that this that this like query is correct so we'll say let query is equal to this and then we can say self dot connection prepare query unwrap for a second pre -upper, prepare, and we need to borrow query, okay. Uh, let statement is equal to this. Then we say statement, statement, query, map, and we pass in the things we care about. So we have one, two, and three, which are ID, relationship name, sibling name. Is that the order that we did them in? Relationship name was the last one. So we have... ID. I think we have, we can use a macro when these don't have the same type. Rust Qlite params. Yeah. Item, so we have the item ID followed by the sibling name followed by the relationship name. All right. And then we run our query map. Uh, so I guess we're just mapping the ID. So we just have row here is the thing that we have input here. We just say row dot get zero. And we say that the ID should be an I64. And we return, okay, item ID ID. Sibling name, sibl silbing, sibling name, nice. And this should be mutable. And this should probably be an unwrap here. We'll fix it later. And then query dot next. And this should be the first thing. And if there's a second thing, then there's a fucking bug. Um, so here we can say if second is sum uh we have some sort of error but for now we'll just panic multiple items matched brownie face and if that's not the case we just refer first all right and should we probably okay first i guess what is the type of this thing first is option results ah so i think that there's like a trans transpose to switch to go from like option result thing you can type transpose to turn that into result option thing uh so we just transpose unwrap with both of these because we want to make sure that they succeeded i don't know what happens when you transpose on a none it must go to okay none so i think it's fine it's fine um so now first is an option item ID, and why is this using a problem? Seems fine. Cargo run. Expected item ID found option item ID. Aha! So I guess there's always the chance that the option of the item doesn't match, and returning none seems reasonable there. Okay, so now we don't crash, and let's just print out what we get. Print line.
Uh, he doesn't like that because it needs to be formatted with debug. Oh, hell yeah, baby. So item one works. And we'll switch this back to try to find item two. So I guess if we do parents, if we try to match with parents, this should fail because this, it should be matching children. But if we put children here, match is fine. Sick. And if we change the name, we like fuck up the name of the task. Oh, baby. Okay. So this is something that for fucking sure should be unit tested like mad. Because there's like all sorts of ways this can fucking fail. Um, but for now, probably good enough. Um, okay. So we can go, we've, that took a while. Much longer than I thought it would. But we've now resolved the ID of a sibling based off of these like heuristics. So we should be able to go back into our client, our fuse client. And here we can just say db. Uh, item ID from sibling relationship name. Uh, and we actually get all of the things that we need from this like matches item relationship folder. So we should do here instead of this like if none, we should say let relationship folder is equal to this. And we can say let some relationship folder is equal to this, else return, uh, oops, is the else goes here, return, okay, not, nothing fails, but we didn't match. And so now we can just call into our database and ask, hey, could you please fucking tell us what our sibling is based off the relationship folder, first thing is the item ID, uh, the second thing, then we have the side, we have the relationship folder dot ID. Oh, that's interesting. We actually grabbed the ID from this. Okay. And then the sibling name. So we say, uh, let sibling name is equal to what it's the path name file name and here we can just pass in and we just say to stir unwrap to stir okay and we're close here except that we actually are using the relationship name here instead of the relationship id but we can just go relationship id and say this is a relationship id and then instead of trying to match on relationships name um think let's think about this relationships id is equal to three no matter what relationships id equals three which is kind of wrong, actually. We are... We don't actually have this piece of information, but that's okay. It's fine. So... This now ends up just being, instead of relationship name, relationship ID. Okay. And then, does this compile now? I think it does. If we unwrap here? No, he doesn't compile. Cargo check. What's he complaining about? Sibling name, expected stir, found option stir. So we just assume that this is castable for now. And uh, let's go back into our DB tool test. And just instead of passing in children, we're going to use relationship ID one. And double check that both paths still work. So when we're trying to match that, that worked. And if we're trying to match from world to hello, we should get back... Okay, good. Everything's still working. Which means that this should now return the right thing. Which means... Um... I think we just return this. And maybe we just return it like this. 
Oh, hell yeah, baby. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I wonder if everything just works now. Seems possible. LS to do... Or test mount. Items. One. Children. Woo! Okay, so we've got the links in there. They're correctly marked as links. They just don't have the function implemented to read the link. We're so close. We're so fucking close. Let's go, baby. Uh, okay. So here, we just have to implement the read link function. Which I think I've seen in here as read link. Yeah, it is. Okay. So here, we just kind of slam in a unsafe extern C function read link. And so we just quickly man to read link to see what his parameters are. Path name, buffer, buff size. Okay. Um, so we have path, buff, buff size. And what's his return value? He, on success, returns the number of bytes placed in buff. On error, negative one is returned and erno is set to indicate the error. Okay. So... First thing that we do when we make these calls is we extract our client and then we say, hey, if this is a path, we have this macro that basically says like, hey, client, is this a, like something that you handle or is this something that the OS handles for us? And so in this case, it says like, if let some Rust uh, pass through path is equal to, we should call this pass through path. If let some pass through path is equal to pass through path. Then we should just call sys, the system implementation of read link for this thing. So we have rust to C path, pass through path. And then we just pass the other params, buff and buff size. And this guy is going to be like, he's gonna like return an error in some cases. So we have another macro here that says, C call erno negative one, which basically says like, hey, execute this function. And if it returns negative one, return negative erno, otherwise return the return. So we can just say, uh, use sys read link to like fix some like macro bullshit. And then I think it's just this. So we call read link with these arguments and we return the result. Okay. Uh, otherwise, we're close. This expression has type path buff. Oh, does this guy? Oh, this is actually what I want. Block client get pass through path. Um, C to Rust path, path, okay. So that's close. And then we match pass through path. Uh, I guess we have, um, if this succeeds, we just pass it through. And if it fails, uh, we log an error and return negative one. Where negative one is actually not correct here, but it's correct enough. Uh, for me, for now. So we'll say log error invalid, uh, failed to retrieve pass through path due to E. Okay. Then this is still fine. Uh, we actually need to do this as I32. Uh, nope. We just return this as I32 here. Great. And this needs to be as pointer. Wonderful. Okay. So now we just have to handle the case where we are in charge of resolving the link. And so here we can say client resolve, or maybe we call read link on the path again. Sure. Let Rust path, you'll see to Rust path path. This we call rust path here, and then we call rust path down here as well. And then we say let link is equal to this. 
and then fix me do something with the link. Maybe we'll write unimplemented here so we'll crash because we don't know what we're going to do yet. It depends on what the client returns, which we haven't figured out yet. Uh, so we have this client and we now have a new function that's similar to reader, except he's called read link. And I don't know what we want to return here or if it's failable. So let's just kind of like start typing and see what happens to <laughs> happen. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to parse the path, which is, can fail actually. Um, so we should check that. Uh, I guess for now we'll just type unwrap here because we ha we haven't really decided. It might we might end up seeing that there's like several return types that we have to like meld together. So we'll just kind of unwrap and then deal with error handling at the end. I think. Oops, what did I just do? There we go. Um. So then we can just match this thing. Um. And we can say item link. Is equal to this, and if we have a item link, if the purpose of our path is to link to this item ID, then we do we just return the we continue on with the item ID. Uh, otherwise, though, we uh, return an error, I guess. But we'll write panic for now because we don't want to deal with that. So panic um, item is not a link. Okay, and then I guess we just return a buffer that is what we want to, like the link that we want to link to. So we have uh, basically items folder join item ID. And I think that's it. Um, this is dot zero and join is not found because it should be a path new from the items folder. And so I guess now we find out that this is going to be a result uh, that is a path buff is where he returns. And the error type is just going to be the error type of parse path. No, there's going to be an additional thing. So there's going to be a new error type here um, called read link error. Okay. And so now we just have to implement the read link error. So boom, boom. This is going to be the same here. We have an op. We may fail to parse the path, which is the first thing, or um, we have not a link. Uh, error item is not a link. Easy. And so here we return err read link error not a link. Boom. And here we map the error to read link error parse path. Easy, easy, easy. And this is read link error, not read their error. And then we wrap this guy in okay. I think we're chilling. Looks like we're chilling. So now we kind of know what this is gonna look like. And go back to our mod here and we can say, if this fails, Uh, we have, okay, V goes to V, and error E goes to log error failed to read link due to E. Otherwise, and then we return negative one, I guess, which is still wrong, but fuck it. Fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. Um, and then we just have to put, like, basically mem copy the link into the buffer. What happens if the buffer is too small? Um, e bad f e fault e access e inval buff size is not positive insufficient kernel memory. Does, are any of these like buffer too small? Return value. These calls return number of bytes. Of if the return value equals both sides, then truncation may have occurred. Okay, so we just may, we might truncate. So it looks like we call what? Stood mem, mem, copy, mem copy? Is there no copy? Copy, copy. 
Is there no fucking mem copy in Rust? There must be. Pointer copy, that's what it all is. Stood pointer copy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so we take our link, and our link is currently a path buff. So we want to convert this into an OS string into encoded bytes. So we just get a buffer of bytes. So let link... We'll just do this. Fuck it. We don't need the old one anymore. Um, and then... Stood pointer copy. Link dot... Uh, is this destination or source? Stood pointer copy takes the source first. So link as pointer buff. And then we just need the size. So let copy size is equal to link len min buff size. Boom. Boom. Arguments as function are correct. Fuck you. Uh... Because this is, uh, he doesn't like like the i8 u8 thing. And does this return how many things were copied? No, but I can just write copy size here. Um, try into expect copy size did not fit in i32, which should never fucking happen. All right. I wonder. Well, let's test mount. Items. One. Children. Function not implemented because we didn't actually hook it up. So we need to say ops read link is equal to some fuse client read link, which is not what I named it. I just named it read link. Run it again. We forgot a semicolon. Here. We run her again. Numerical result out of range. Interesting. Why is there a colon here? Oh, because this smiley face is a fucked up name. Can we ls children world? Okay, so what does he like here? Use bad error value eight. Okay, so we have some logging to do, I guess, to figure out which path this took to fail. So let's just go into this read link thing, and we'll just say... Uh, well, we know we didn't get here, because we didn't see this error log. We might have got here. So we're going to say print line resolved as pass through path. Pass through path. So that could indicate some bug. Otherwise, we should see this fail to read link. Otherwise, we got here. So then you will say print line uh, resolved link link. And that should give us some clues. Okay, so we did resolve the link to items 2. To-dos can have child to-dos. Well, child is just the relationship we've created initially. But I'm kind of imagining right now uh that the i'll have like a parent child relationship for project so everything within a project will be a child of that project and then i'll have block blocking relationships and then each thing is like each item could be have like multiple things in it right like i could it's a directory that could have like a note with some pictures you can imagine right you can imagine taking some screenshots and wanting to capture those so that later you can look back and say oh this is what it looks like at the end um in the same way that you might want to like upload a photo to your ticket tracker on jira or something right uh okay so the resolved link is actually working and it's just the return value he doesn't like that i returned eight here so i guess maybe even though read link claims that i should return the number of bytes placed in buff it's possible that fuse does not want that so let's see what the fuck is he saying read link read link read link i, I kind of just made an assumption that's the same the buffer should be filled with a null terminated string okay so that's surprising. The return value should be zero for success. Why the fuck? All right. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. All right. Uh, 
All right, all right, all right. So here we return zero. And we actually need to do a uh, min buff size minus one. And because we need to stick a null terminator in there. And so then we say copy size plus one buff add copy size plus one is equal to zero to null terminate him. Uh, yeah. No. Just copy size, not plus one. Because copy size is one is the, is the length and the index for that is like one off. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's try that. LS? We're close. What doesn't he like now? Wait, wait, wait. That's right, isn't it? He goes to slash item slash two, which is test mount items two. So I guess that he just doesn't like the symlink is not relative to the root of the file system, which is kind of fucked. Uh, which means, which means, which means, which means, just when we read the link here, we just need to um, add on the root of the DB. So uh, FS or self DB root. No, that's wrong too. It's not, it's not the root, it's the root of the mount. <sighs> and nobody knows what that is right now. Gross. Oh, that's so fucked, man. I guess it could be a relative link. If it's a relative link, is there an easy way to... Retrieve that here. Bum, 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 bum. Or do I have to, like... Is there, like... I don't really want to implement that, but... I guess... We can... we Actually, that's, that's not too hard, actually. Because we should know... The path that we're getting in. So we just have... Uh, print line path. We should just be able to go up until uh, we get to the root and then tack on the rest. Uh, oopsies, ls this. Yeah, so here we have items one children world and we should just add dot dots until we get to the very top. You want to convert relative to absolute? No, the problem is that I have absolute, but like I have the thing as items two, and I need to convert that to a path relative to input path, which is fine. It's fine. We can just say that like let output path is equal to path buff new, and we say uh let's see, let's see, let's see. While let uh, path dot iter yeah dot length count so we'll say num let num components is equal to this for i for nothing in num components output path dot push dot dot okay. Um, okay, then, uh, we have the items folder, but it's relative to the root, so we extract a bunch of it, output, path, push, this, is it like this, how do I, oh, it's the dot dot in this language, right, um, okay, then output path 
push item ID zero to string. Jesus. And then we return the upper path. Okay. And cargo check now. So item swallow doesn't have a sign, so no compile time, so I put like a little ampersand here, easy. And then I run this. And I ls the test mount. Uh, so fuck, we have one up, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. That's not right. That's not right at all. Why is that not right? Because we have items, one, children, world. So I'm going one too far. I think. Too, too far, maybe? That may make sense. Let's just double check. I think it's two. LS this. Oh, baby! Let's go! So I go up one, two, three items, two. Does that work? Yeah, baby! Okay. And the parents go back to hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can go back and forth. From hello, children. Wait, does that actually work? Woo! We fucking did it, baby. God damn. That was a lot harder than I thought it would be. Like, a lot harder. Um, Because I thought that that would be kind of quick. <laughs> That's kind of funny. At the end of the last stream, I was like, there's no fucking way I'm going to do this in five minutes. And then today, before I started, I was like, maybe I was wrong. Maybe I could have done it in five minutes. And then I started, I'm like, nope, definitely not five minutes. Um, okay. That's pretty sick. Um, there's a lot of, like, cleanup to do there. There's some, like, unit testing and error handling stuff to resolve. Um, but overall, I think that's, like, all of the interesting work pretty done. And I'm pretty happy with that. I think a lot of the complexity is probably coming from the fact that I'm resolving by name here. Like, a lot of that was just spent doing, like, DB lookup. We got 20 minutes. What to do now? Uh, well, I think this is why I give myself some buffer. I say that I'll stream for, like, one to two hours because uh, it just means that this is kind of, like, a good... This is a good stopping point. I think starting something new would take over 30 minutes. I think we're doing all the cleanup and stuff is kind of boring. So, I think I'm going to call it there. Uh, thank you for watching, guys. This was fun. Uh, if you like what you saw, I stream most days at around 1 or 2 o'clock Pacific time, and I stream for, like, 1 or 2 hours. Uh, if you don't want to watch live, um, there's a YouTube link in the Twitch description that will link you to the VODs for, that, that go up for almost everything. I think there's only one that I didn't upload ever. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube and you want to come say hi, there's a Twitch link in the YouTube description. Um, there's a Discord in the Twitch description as well for if you want, like, announcements of when I'm going to go live, just, like, a little ahead of time, as well as, like, you could, like, talk about programming and shit in there if you want. I don't know. Um, and a GitHub link in the Twitch description as well where this code will eventually end up. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye!